I thoroughly enjoyed last week's trial for our new web design time machine episodes, so I thought I'd jump on the way back machine again this week and have another go. This week we're going to be working with Pringles. Thanks again, Reese, for the shout out on this one. And we're not just going to cover what we did last week with the Burger King episode. We're going to take it a step further. We're going to go all the way back to the turn of the new millennium. We are going to pick a website from 2000, then from 2019 to show a more recent iteration, and then we'll finish on the latest version. I think you'll be quite surprised by the sheer development, even of a huge brand like Pringles, and how the website has adapted from the year 2000 to 2023. I think if you were to put Pringles tubes from the year 2000 on store shelves right now, you would probably be able to fool a lot of consumers into thinking they're the latest version. Yes, there's been a rebrand. Yes, there have been advancements and developments on the brand and the packaging, but you'll see that it's reached a plateau where these changes are now far more subtle. And yes, I did say rebrand. But when we look at the website and the evolution and contrast, it just showed how far web design had to go in the year 2000. My expectations over the next five years, we're going to see a leveling off of top level web design. We've hit a groove now. And you can say that that's dull and uninspiring, but I believe that web designs hit a level of quality that even newcomers to the industry know what's expected of them. When I jumped into web design in 1999, it really was the Wild West. I think we'll crack on with this week's episode. Before we review this website, as of December 2023, we're going to go back in time using the Wayback Machine, as we did with last week's episode on Burger King. And we're going to look and break down the evolution of this website. I'm going to try and give you an insight from a designer's perspective. But this time, we're going to go all the way back to the new millennium and the year 2000. And I just thought it'd be fun just to add this as an extra experience into these videos. We can see here that the copyright at the bottom is 2000. The company, interestingly, was owned by Procter & Gamble, now owned by Kellanova, which I only just realized is the new parent brand for Kellogg's. I'd love to do a video on that evolution and why they made that decision. Puzzles me a little bit when you've got such an established brand as Kellogg's. Maybe it's because they had to bring in other brands as well. But back to this design, I remember them well. This is exactly the type of website I was building in my very early days when I was still way back in high school. We had so many limiting options to work with. Actually, the website I would have designed around the 1999-2000 mark wouldn't look exactly like this because I would have built it in tables. Yes, I shudder thinking about that. And I'd have had one table cell for the text to come to around here. And then the image would have been in a table here. And of course, that table frame would be invisible. So it would just structure on the page. If this type of website looks alien to you, then you're definitely younger than me. Working with fixed widths here, this will probably be set to about 800 pixels width, meaning that this content frame was probably about 550, 600. So about the same as what you would get in a designed email. This just shows how little email marketing has evolved in terms of this is the type of structure fixture that you would get for a mail shot. I'm not sure if it'll allow us to go to another page. We'll try it. This has been working a bit slow today. Ah, yes, it does. So we can see that the brand evolution is actually been much slower. The, the look and feel of the new Pringle cans haven't evolved at anywhere near the same rate as the website. And that's one thing I found since the late 90s is even though graphic design was becoming established in terms of digital design, the challenge we had was web design was always changing, always in flux meaning that every iteration of a website every three to four years would look wholly different and take it on several steps. I believe that slowed down a little bit in the last couple of years. And so if we look at the 2019 version of the Pringles website, even though there's been a lot of change behind the scenes, this still looks like it would be passable as a website in 2023. That's the difference in terms of we've seen a rapid increase in the development of technology with web design and our comprehension as designers. That's plateaued over the past few years and simplified and streamlined. I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I think we've hit a point now where we know what a quality website looks like and how it works and the implementation of UX has really helped with that. So let's have a look in a bit more detail at this version. We've got the rotating banner here at the top. Again, it's a little bit clunky in 2023 because we're trying to get multiple messages across at the same time. And if you can have a revolving header, I wouldn't necessarily recommend having two because two is just neither here nor there. I would go for a minimum of three or four or not have any at all. If you insist on using revolving heroes or rotating slideshows for hero graphics, this section here, then I would strongly recommend keeping the same message on each and having a different image. I'm going to show you the latest version in a minute, and it will show just how the latest version has really modernized that approach. The one thing that's interesting here is I was critical of this on our Moonshot launch pad when I was looking at the Coca-Cola website. When I interacted with the hero, it would still revolve. In this case, it remains still. 
or at least when I interacted with it. So maybe that's a little bit quirky. Maybe it's because it's a Wayback Machine. So here on a wider screen, and I know designers have become more comfortable now working with larger screen sizes, even though back in 2019, of course, we had responsive web design, and especially for a website of this scale. But we can see here that this isn't a perfect design experience. This is a widescreen setting, although my screen is ultra widescreen and I only record a certain section to make sure it fits into your screen window at 16 by 9. And we can see here the gap above and below the image is much narrower than in between each of the image signposting blocks. For me, that's not great. I would have probably looked to have stacked them left aligned with the same spacing and had more white space to one side or brought them in and having consistent spacing either side and then having a bigger gap each side. In fact, that last option is what I would have gone for. This kind of floating with the gap is widening between the sections is something that as modern web designers, we try to avoid because one, it draws your eye to one element at a time. So I'm having to look over to the left, then I'm scanning right the way across to the center one and then all the way across to the right. My head is actually having to turn on a screen this size. That's not really the flow that we're after. I like the consistent spacing above and below. We could actually add a little bit more. And that's one thing we've noticed in the last four years since this website was built. We use a lot more white spaces designers now. The idea of scrolling is not the tabooed subject it used to be. Then when we go to the footer, and this is probably saving my biggest criticism for last. Again, this could be because of how this is translated on the Wayback Machine. It may be this background image or something that's more in line. But we can see the tone of the reds on the signposting is different to the footer which is different to this button here, which I believe actually is different to the two bands of red on the heading. So we've got about four or five different tones of red for the same brand, which is completely baffling for a brand the size of Pringles. I just can't get my head around that particular aspect. We should really be looking at two different tones of red and then being more disciplined with our design when creating the layout. Many off to the left, we've got the little arrow pointer indicator so we can see countries and that doesn't seem to be working. I don't think that's a quirk with the website. I think that's just the snapshot on here. But that's enough of the 2019 version. The other thing I'll mention to you is if we look at that brand now, we know that they've had a tuning of the brand and gone for a more simple flat design approach. I actually really like the new version. I think it's still got the same character as a 2019 version, but it's just simplified and it's easy to see. So I really like this new site. I think they have modernized it and kept it on brand, but also brought it into the current age as well. We've got a video hero unit here. So the beauty of this is it gives you the option, ask for permission before it starts playing the video header. So if I just play it for a second, we can see it opens up a YouTube video in a pop-up window for the second trailer of Pringles. I don't think I can see a close option here. For me, I'd rather have a close option. That could be just me not seeing it, but I don't think there is. So I'd like to be able to collapse that down. And I think they could probably do something a bit nicer for that. But look at this. So we've got the divider here, and I was delighted this year when Squarespace added a section divider option for the pages because it allowed us to create more unique looking websites. And we can see this chevron shape here, which acts as an arrow drawing us down and pointing to the next content section. But most importantly, it's telling us that there's more content on that page in a subtle way. We then have a secondary hero, which has a huge percentage stat and a play on some statistics that 43% of people have gotten their hands stuck in a Pringles can. I think as a civilization, we are absolutely doomed. So probably just a case of giving up right now. And I suppose it's normalizing the fact that someone can get their hand in a crisp tube. Okay, I think we'll swiftly move on from that. And we've got another hero unit here. So we've got three heroes in a row, or you could argue. This one's just a graphic, and if I'm being honest, that seems a little lazy. Maybe I'm being a bit harsh, but we should really have clear call to actions on this. And this texture, it wouldn't add too much work to have this as a pattern that extends to the background. I know having everything as one image might reduce loading time, which is one trade-off that we always have as designers. But to have this as a transparent PNG with the background floating behind it, I think would just create such a nice striking effect. Again, we're always working with trade-offs, so I'm not going to be overly critical about that. I really like the signposting here. It relies on the impact of the beautiful photography of the products, the vibrant colors that really pop at the page. This reminds me a lot of the Burger King website in terms of how they use warm colors in the backdrop to set off the food products. I'm going to have to find an example that's not food next week because it's not great so close to lunchtime. Looking at these signposts here as well, we are reversing the chevron from the header to keep a consistency in the design going through it. But the design consistency on this is spot on. So going back to the 2019 version, we can see that this really had trouble with consistency and flow through the site. We had a menu over the left hand side. We've got these huge hero units that are automatically sliding. 
then we've got one block here one in here and with huge gaps in between them and then we have a footer that looks like it's plucked from a website from the early 2000s bit of a mishmash to be honest but if we look at this even the buttons have a really nice subtle but impactful playful rollover effect then we have the repeating chevron in the footer to match the header really like the chunky menu i like the fact that the masthead sticks to the top of the page so as we scroll through that remains in place and then as we go into the footer menu we've got almost a jumbo footer we've got this menu which is broken down into multiple columns i like that personally though i think this is just floating and fighting a little bit for attention with this so for me i would have these a little bit closer together but this is personal taste each four columns of the menu i would have closer together and then i'd move the social media icons to the right hand side and make this a little more compact another option we could have four and four then we've got more space we could even bring in an instagram gallery or a more impactful for social media icon set but ultimately i think this website does a great job of working with a new version of the brand and the colors really pop on this without it becoming too heavy and too dependent on that red so now it's your turn to tell me what you think leave a comment with your views do you think pringles have taken a step forward with both the rebrand and the website also if there's a particular website or brand that you'd like me to cover using this time machine technique then get in touch i will try my best to accommodate i'm hoping to do another one of these next week i'll catch you soon cheers